Okay, now I do want to do one more example with you. Like I said, it's actually an example that you already know. And I'm going to see if you guys can do roll marker to grunt work on this one. In advanced, there was a topic that you learned in term four that had first order recursive formulas in it. We just didn't call them that. For example, does this ring any bells? What is this? Which topic is this from? This is from series and sequences, right? Because one of the ways you define how to get to the next term or get to the, the nth sum, the partial sum, is to look at the gap from one term previous or one sequence previous, right? Now, if I said, I'll just let's start with an easy one, okay? If we did an arithmetic progression, what was the test for an arithmetic progression? How do you know that something is arithmetic? Yeah, there's a common difference. If you look at two terms that are adjacent, consecutive, and then you look at another two terms, then the difference between them should be the same. Okay? Another way of saying that is if you look at the difference between two partial sums, a complete one and then one before that, right? the difference will be just that one nth term, which we have um, a formula for that, don't we? It's n, sorry, it's a actually, a plus some number of that common difference that you were telling me about, right? How many common differences are there? n minus 1, because you start here and then you add 1 for every other term. Okay? So this formula here, right? this is a first order recursive formula. Do you agree? But we have a non-recursive formula to help us work out the same thing. If you want, say, the nth partial sum, you don't need to rely on working out all of the sums before that. You can go directly there. We had this trick with arithmetic progressions, if you remember. We had to um, pair up every term, the first and the last one, because they're small and big, and then the next one in and the next one in. So you actually get, once you pair up all the terms, that's how many pairs you've got, you have 2a, right? There's the first term, which is a, and then the last term, which also has a in it, plus what? It's the same thing again, isn't it? It's, it's that number of common differences. So I just want you to look at these two things, right? It's very similar to our setup here. You've got a recursive formula. This is just part of the definition of an arithmetic progression. And then you've got this thing. Now, I told you there was this way that you could sort of like logically, like diagrammatically work it out. First and last, second and second last, and so on, right? But we can prove this by induction. And induction is the perfect object to use because it deals with objects in the ones just previous or objects in the ones just next. So I'm just going to put these here for you. Take this recursive formula as your foundation, just like we did in example one. See if you can prove this. I already know that you know it's true, okay? But can you prove that this form, this non-recursive formula, is true by induction? <clears throat> All right, everyone, I'm going to help you out. Um, I saw some people who are very, very close, so I think now is an appropriate mi m moment to uh, show you how this works. Um, before I get dived into that, I want to just address a really good question Morgan asked, which is around this. Um, I, have <laughs> I have trained you well. If you look at this question and you're like, oh, there's a domain restriction on the values of n. Um, I better use that, right? When you were doing, for example, inequality proofs, um, especially induction inequality proofs, if you never referred to this, you are in some serious trouble, right? Because you're like, you, you can't prove the result works because for previous terms it shouldn't work, right? Now, if you went through this proof successfully, you might have thought, uh, did, did I ever use it? Like, I assumed this of k. Did I ever have to say something about k being greater than or equal to 2? And the answer is probably not, and I'll tell you why. Why is it that, for example, if I gave you some inequality, like this, right? This one here, okay? Hopefully you know enough about this graph and this graph to know that sometimes this is not true. Do you agree? It's, um, if you think back to the beginning of this topic, statements are either um, true or false, or, or they could be conditional, as in this case, right? Now, if you don't invoke the condition on that, you're in trouble. That's why we put a condition like n is greater than whatever it happens to be. But this condition is here for a rather different reason. It's not because this formula isn't true, it's because this formula doesn't really have a sensible definition. Think about this. What if I tried and said, hey, what about n equals zero, right, on this thing, right? What would that even mean? What, what does Sn represent? 
the sum of the first n terms, right? So if I said to you, oh, OK, take the sum of the 0th term and the sum of the negative 1th term. Like, what, what is this even for our series and sequences, right? The whole point is we start somewhere to find, and then we keep on going. We progress, right? That's what we deal with in the world of arithmetic progressions. So in this case, the whole idea of an arith an AP is not defined for n is less than this particular value. So really, it's more of a formality than in this case where it just mathematically breaks you if you don't pick the right values of n. Does that answer your question as to why it's there and you don't explicitly refer to it? All right, I've already begun this proof by induction as you can see and maybe you're like, yep, that part I got. The test case here, it's actually a little more work than you are used to because you have to deal with the fact that some of these uh, pronumerals uh, constants, they never go away. Like, I'm proving this true for any A, any first term, for any D, any common difference, right? Um, so unlike normal proofs by induction where I rubbed it off, where it's like, oh, I just end up with five, that's my answer, and that was what I wanted. Here, you have to end up with algebra on both sides. It may have taken a second to twig for you that when you go to the recursive formula, you write it down for the first value it's supposed to work at, n equals 2, and then you're like, uh, now what? <laughs> right? You actually have to deal with the fact that by definition, we define the sum of the first one terms as the first term, which is a. Is that okay? And then your algebra kind of sorts you out from there. So there's my test. There's my assumption. What does my proof step look like? I've already done the left-hand side for you. What does the right-hand side look like? Come on, help me out. You should have been able to write this even without doing much to it, right? Uh, who's someone who hasn't said anything? Aaron, do you, have a, do you have a first line here for the k plus 1 step? k plus 1 case, rather? Yeah. I'll give you a clue. It starts with a k. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm k plus 1. Yes, very good. So remember, we're substituting k plus 1 into n, right? Over 2, two and then what? Fantastic. Thank you very much, Aaron. Now, that KD, of course, it comes from, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm thinking of first-person shooters when I see KD. There's not a KD ratio, guys. Um, I'm putting K plus 1 into here. The minus 1 cancels, and then the common difference is on, along the end. Okay, so this is what I'm trying to prove. Now, to make it easier for me, and you saw me do this in the previous proof, and sometimes um, it's just useful in proofs by induction, right? I'm going to go from this step, and I'm actually going to expand it just a little bit because it's going to be easier for me to, to arrive at an expanded form. There will be less thinking for me to do. So when you expand this, I'm actually going to put that half out the front. That doesn't change things very much. I'm going to do k plus 1 times this binomial. Okay. I think, correct me if I'm wrong because I've already made one mistake today, I'm going to get 2ak k squared d. There's me distributing the k. And then I'm going to get 2a plus kd. That's me distributing the 1. Is that okay? Checks out. All right, wonderful. So here comes the actual proof. Now I know where I'm going. And I saw some of you didn't write this where I'm going step, and that's really important. Okay. Now I'm going to give it a go. I can't use this as my foundation. What do I know? What's established that I can start from? From the recursive formula. From the recursive formula. Uh, this one right here. I'm going to try out the recursive formula for k plus 1. Yeah? So here we go. Uh, from recursive formula. In these kinds of questions where you have two competing formulas, one and two, to talk about the same kinds of objects, I think it is a very, very helpful thing to always specify where you're getting your thing from. Uh, what have we got? I'm going to go over this way. Um, if I try out n equals k plus 1, I'll get s of k plus 1 minus what? S of k. That's me substituting k plus 1 in here. Plus 1 minus 1 cancels. Bam. Of course, that's going to be useful because how are you going to use this in a second on the next line? I will substitute in the assumption right here. I'm, I'm not quite there yet, but that's where I'm going. Uh, and then I'm going to put k plus 1 into here. What do you get? A plus what? KD. KD. It was that same thing that happened up here, wasn't it? A plus KD. All right. Let's use our assumption now. So I've got s of k plus 1 hanging out the front. And then this whole thing. All right, let's write it. k on 2 outside of 2a plus k minus 1 d equals by assumption. How's it looking to you so far? 
really just done a substitution, okay? Now really all the work that remains is just some careful and methodical algebra. This is what I'm going to make the subject because that's where I'm headed, right? So I'll make that on the left hand side. I will add this somewhat awful looking mess to the right hand side and hopefully I arrive here. Could you raise your hand if you got there? Hands up, I see one, two, okay, wonderful, all right. What I'm gonna do is I will finish writing that up there for those of you who didn't raise your hand, but for those of you who did, well done. That wasn't so hard, was it? The logic is the same kind of thing we've been employing in Proof by Mathematical Induction this whole time. Yeah.